Hello and welcome by the Orchid Saga. My name is Joachim Wiersma and I'm an orchid grower from the Netherlands. So yeah, today I have my first uh, little Q&A uh, video. Uh, I did collect some questions from you guys, so thank you very much. I really enjoy uh, answering questions. And where can I make a video about it or I uh, at least leave a comment with an also with an answer, short answer and then I uh, uh, will add in there if I take it uh, into a video as well. So that's what I'm doing today and uh, we're going to talk about a uh, little bit about fails, uh, my psychopsis, fungicide and uh, the care, a care chart that I did make. So um, I had the questions on my uh, screen and it's a very bright day so I'm squeezing a little bit because the backlight is very uh, harsh, very sharp. <laughs> Um, but um, so yeah, let me zoom in because it's very tiny. Uh, Live rocks sixty two. Um, this question is from last uh, November, so I'm s I apologize. It did take me a while to answer your question, but it's uh, uh, asked on a uh, fail update where I did show the blooms, uh, the leaves, and the aerial roots. But we didn't have a, a look uh, inside of the pots, so she was asking, uh, do they have many? Uh, uh, roots in the pots as well. So I thought well there's only one way to uh, show you uh, is to pick up a few orchids and I will uh, put my phone to the side. I will need it uh, back later but um, so I will grab a few but yeah of course which one? I, I have no idea which one you would like to see obviously. Uh, there are so many I have 63 I think. So I'm going to take a few um, randomly I have no idea. Well, shall we start with this big one here? Why not? I think someone picked this one out. So I did here, yeah. <laughs> no, I have no idea, of course, but um, let me see. Where's the, the camera? So this is the pot from uh, sort of above. And I have some aerial roots here going in the pot as well, as you can see. So I like to train them as well a little bit. And I'm easily going to lift it. So you hopefully can see and especially where my hand is and I'm not sure if I am in frame but yes this one has roots in a pot. Here and there uh, we have an older one as well as you can see. That's not a big problem. I leave them in because this one has a uh, quite a lot of uh, amount of roots and some uh, may be a little bit discolored because I like to use seaweed and that's, that kind of stuff and that may may sometimes uh, do a little bit of discoloration on the roots. But this one is uh, doing fairly well. We have uh, aerial roots on that side as well. Whoops. So, <laughs> did you see the spike going? <laughs> uh, yeah, this one is really top heavy. I should be a little bit more carefully, of course. Don't want to break those spikes. Let's put it back. This one was a little bit heavy to, um, to hold and to show. Um, yeah, which one? Oh, this, I don't know why, but it's kind of hard to, <laughs> to grab one. Well, let's do this one as well. I have no idea if you would like to... Whoops, aerial root. Let's go. Let's go. Yes, there it is. Uh, the roots of this one. But uh, what I just see, I didn't notice it, because the, it's getting very sunny again. Just right above my finger, you probably see it already, happy sap on the leaves. This one has quite a lot, so this one is really enjoying the warmer days and it has a beautiful cluster of spikes. Uh, blooms, I'm sorry, I'm going to put, put it down just for a second so I can lift it. Sometimes a little bit hard to get them out, I must admit. So once again, where are we? Here we are. So we see quite some beautiful green roots. Once again, some older ones, not a big problem because this one has a heck of a lot green roots and once again here some older roots and I just leave it because it isn't a problem yet. If this orchid starts to go bigger and older it may sort of become a problem and, and then I will do just a regular uh, up potting. So then I take care of the older roots but so far so good. This one is really healthy and I'm I'm going to leave it in, in this pot, like I said. So that's the second one. Now I have to put them back in the pot. <laughs> and with these fells it's a little bit harder because of all those roots. Here I am again, I'm sorry. 
So that was the second one. Uh, let me put it back. Try not to break anything. <laughs> Meanwhile. Uh, okay, this one we've done. Let's uh, grab a yellow one. Why not? Beautiful, beautiful yellow one. This is a no ID with a leaf that can go. It wasn't a, it was a leaf from a tree actually. Don't know how that came in. So this is uh, the no ID. As you can see, beautiful, healthy green roots. I really like the color of those. Even though you might think, or you should think, this is, doesn't get much light. But, but it's probably enough to uh, get the roots uh, green. Here in the front I have a bit of a darker root. Uh, let me check again. It's very dark green. So it's not brown, it's not that. I don't know if you can see it. But it's probably an older one that not fully did adapt into the system. But for the rest it's, uh, it's beautiful. It's doing fairly well. And it has even growing tips on the earlier roots. So that was another one. That was three, let's do five in total. If that's okay, and of course, if you have an orchid and you saw it and you thought, well, I'm very curious, I want to see that one, let me know, I will make another video, and it's no problem. But I just uh, choose them ra randomly. This is such a beauty. So I'm very curious to see how this one does. And it's the beautiful yeah, purple, dark purple, reddish one. I have no name for it, sorry. But I like it. It's, it's such a beautiful color. So let's try to get it out, <laughs> out of the pot. And this one, same situation. It's an older fell. We have a lot of roots here. Let me see, can you see it? I hope you can. Those are wider, so they, those do not get much light. We have one root here, is this one. Uh, it, I'm sorry, this one is uh, dead, but we have a lot of green roots as well. So this one is uh, doing fine. So I'm not gonna take it out because of that one single root. As you can see, it's a beautiful orchid, a lot of aerial roots as well, beautiful sturdy leaves and a beautiful spike. Actually two spikes, this is a uh, completely different, no, it's not different, it's a uh, secondary spike, I should say, with a branch, etc. So yeah, doing fine. Uh, yeah, that was number four. So one more, because I can, would like to show more, but we have some more questions to address. Uh, let's grab a, whoops, and my, come on. Uh, yeah. Oh, this is the downside of this. Yeah, they are now, I will fix that later. They are now uh, 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 joining one another a little bit too close. I like to have them uh, separately, but that's, uh, I can do that afterwards. Let's grab my Leodoro. Because this is, I think, a favorite from a lot of people. And I think the most growers has this one, have this one as well. Beautiful one, very nice um, leaves, colored leaves. And this has currently five spikes and three of them are blooming so that's very nice it has uh, quite some roots uh so yeah how do we take it out let me see yeah i can i can lift it with my thumb underneath it i uh, lift it a little bit with my thumb and then i grab it with my other hand and let me slowly i feel an area root somewhere that's, we have a little spider there. I don't know if you can see it. That lives there. So yeah, we have some older roots here. That was to be expected because this is a fairly old orchid. But most of them are just beautiful green. And here we have some uh, black spots, but then the roots did continue to grow. So maybe the pH was a little bit off back then. But um, yeah, I think it's doing wonderful fine. If you can see, I hope, yeah. So we have a lot of roots in front as well. Once again, I hope you can see it. It's very difficult. But these, uh, this one is uh, one of my oldest. So I was expecting some older roots 
and those will die off at a certain point. Once again, it's not the end of the world. Um, just keep an eye on it. If your orchid isn't healthy, it's not beneficial, of course, having dead roots there because of the bacteria. But if it's healthy, it's, it's no problem at all. I grow, uh, grow them like this for years and I'm just not constantly taking them out because chances are if I did take this out, did clean the roots, put it back, maybe one week later I have damaged the root, I didn't notice, I have another dead root again in the pot. So I keep, would keep be, uh, busy uh, uh, up potting and repotting them way too often. So that's not necessary. Uh, let me put them back. Okay, okay, I will do one summer bloomer because it's such a beauty. It's a fairly new one. That's the last one. This is a, a really summer bloomer. Um, this is the Pal LLD's Bear King crossed with RK3 Canary Ludimaniana. So it's a very long name, <laughs> but here we go. As you can see, a heck of a lot of roots. And this is a, a bit of a younger orchid, so we don't have uh, dead roots yet in the pot. And yet it sounds <laughs> very promising, but I know it will happen because all the roots just die off at a certain point. It just happens. Nothing to be afraid of. Because as long as you keep the pH right, and I will address that later on in this video because I actually had a, a uh, question about it. So that's very important for uh, how to deal with, uh, with your orchid in this setup and what's important. And the pH is uh, one of the biggest, probably the biggest part if you ask me. So not the uh, slightly older roots or anything like that. So I will now go over to the next question within a, a little bit of different setup. <laughs> So here we are at the new setup with a next question and that one is coming from Warren Fredler. I hope you pronounce your name right. I think I didn't do it completely right. <laughs> but you had a question. Do you have any ideas for taking care of Psychopsis mariposa pyloric? Uh, so that's a very open question but you asked it to me and I think you know that I uh, grow mainly in self-watering so I think uh, you um, ask how I grow them self-watering, I think. So I did uh, point the camera a little bit downwards because there I have a Psychopsis in, uh, in that corner and I have one here, the big yellow one. So I will uh, show you and talk a little bit about them. Let's grab this one first. So yeah, they really like light, intermediate to high light, no, no direct sunlight. Mo yeah, most of the orchids don't like that, of course, but uh, very high light and they, uh, they will bloom for you. But, of course, if, if you need a, a healthy um, orchid for a toilet to bloom, and here we have the first, and you can already see this one is uh, growing the roots outside of the pot. And I probably damaged a little bit with taking it out and in. Yeah, these feel kind of firm still. And he, I hope you can see it. We have here some brownie roots there and a very nice one next to it. Let me uh, put this pot down so I can point it out a little bit better. This is a new root here, beautiful uh, white one, almost white. And these are the older ones. Some turn a little bit brown. Once again, I use a uh, powder stuff with uh, seaweed in it. And that powder stuff, uh, uh, you can see here some residue of seaweed and um, that is, uh, yeah, this does let the roots a little bit uh, discolorate. But sometimes like this one is also a bit discolored. That might be even a dead one. I'm not sure. But when I started seaweed, I thought I have a lot of uh, dead roots and I took orchids out of the pot to ch check them. Turned out they weren't dead at all. So, um, it's not always the case, and over the years, I think you can see if uh, if your orchid is healthy. So I have a little bit of uh, mold here on this one. I should take care of that. That's a little bit of old tissue, which you can get in the, when you have them in self watering. So that's something. And these bulbs are very close to one another, so it's sometimes a little bit hard to um, get fresh air in. But you can see we have a, a lot of roots here as well. Green ones, some discoloration here and there, but this one is doing very well for me. 
and it has this uh, fourth spike already. So in winter they do a little bit less. They bloom way slower. They're always uh, uh, sequential bloomers, so they uh, make new bloom spikes and they can go for 10 years or even more on one spike. So that's beautiful. But in, uh, like I said, in winter they slow a little bit down um, because it's then a little bit too cold for them. So they do survive, but they do a little less good. Um, so let's put this one back into the pot. And uh, did I cover everything? Well, you saw that this one, I'm sorry, is potted up in small pumice. I apologize, I did forget to mention that. So I really like the pumice for myself watching the setup. So that's uh, for this one. And this one is doing fairly well. Uh, once again, if you want to know more about my feeding levels, pH and etc., that will be later on in this video. So that saves me a little bit time. <laughs> because I don't want to make it too long, but I want to share as much information as I can because that on the end of the day, that is a Q&A. So you asked for it. Uh, this one, as you can see, I'm touching the roof already. This back part of the, uh, the name tags, of course, in a way. <laughs> you can see this is dying off and this plant wasn't as strong to begin with as the other, in comparison to the other one, but this is, um, I'm sorry, uh, you guys, for the interruption. Um, basically, because my battery died and then I started recording again. But I did forget to put my mic on. So um, I have to redo this and that's not a big of a problem I have. That's why I have a little bit of a different setup now. But we were talking about these bulbs. And as you can see, they are really dried up. And they all are dead, of course. Um, but these are here for about at least eight months or something. So it's not that harmful, but I do not really like the shriveling on the, these bulbs. But like I said, this, this one wasn't a strong plant to begin with, but I have it for years. So, so far it's doing fairly well, I think. But um, yeah, I will um, repot this uh, as soon as I, this is the last growth as soon as this one starts to make a new growth and so far I don't see anything but then I will repot it because uh, like I said they are very uh, finicky about repotting and I will not uh, interrupt this uh, too much um, yeah let me put a camera down and we will have a look at the uh, inside of the pot so we can show the mixture um, I have Lekka in the bottom uh, with a few ceramic pieces are left there and then I did go over into the uh, pumice. Did I say, yes, yeah, ceramics and lekka in the bottom part and then I uh, have the smaller pumice here again. And as you can see, we have here a root. Well, actually two, the one on the right is probably dead, I think, but the one on the left is still alive. So luckily this one has some alive roots. So the plant can feed itself and support the flower spikes as good as it does. Um, yeah, I really, really don't want to uh, cut these spikes, but these are very long as you can see. So maybe it would be better, but I really like them so, so much. And once again, this is here for uh, months like this. So I think it will, uh, will do fine in the end. But yeah, this year I really try to uh, get the strain back in this plant. And yeah, I'm saying this year because in winter, it's basically uh, getting these through winter as good as you can because it's too cold and they, uh, they don't like it. So that's the first. And then in uh, really uh, in spring and summer, they start to grow again and they probably will uh, shoot out new growths. And I'm hoping at least one. And then I, like I said, I will repot it. What you can do if you grow them self-watering is uh, in winter, if it's a bit colder, putting, on, putting them on heat mats uh, so the reservoir will not uh, get as cold. But yeah, I'm not doing that because I need, would need too much uh, heat mats for all my plants. So uh, they have to uh, deal with it and they do, but they will slow down quite, quite a bit. But they still grow, grow for me and they still bloom as you can see, but it takes them a little bit longer and they don't shoot out new growth in winter um, so far. So uh, yeah, 
But yeah, if you have a uh, psychopsis type, um, I don't think it does matter uh, much which one you have. You want to uh, yeah, uh, be careful about the root system. So if you repot it, try to do it at the right time. So if you have a new grow that is about to shoot out new roots, that's the perfect time for a repot. Um, I did an emergency repot on these guys, even though they weren't uh, well, but the media was so bad, so I did uh, repot them uh, straight away. And they did survive it, but it took, uh, at least from this one, uh, quite some, uh, some energy. And um, even though it's quite some years back, I still uh, think this isn't as uh, strong, because in comparison, you can see this one has way more leaves, more bulbs, four spikes. This one has three spikes, so that's, that's fine. But uh, the bulbs, the amount of bulbs, uh, yeah, I would like to have a few more. So I hope that uh, covered uh, uh, your question. If you still have any questions or I did forget to mention something, uh, please uh, leave me, uh, let me know. And of course, if you didn't ask the question but you have some questions as well, feel free to leave them in the comment section. So let's get over to the next que question. So yeah, I apologize, I did forget to put my mic uh, back on, so I hope it was uh, enough, you could, uh, the quality, good enough, but I think this is better with the uh, mic on. I apologize, uh, it happened because of the battery and I did forget to uh, put it on again. So the third question is coming from, and these letters are so tiny, where are you? This is uh, uh, Harald uh, Groysner, I hope, once again, if you pronounce your name right. Uh, hi, a short question. What kind of fungicide do you use? Greetings from uh, Munich. Munich. Um, that was on a video where I did a uh, repot. I think it was some one of the videos where I did uh, film my progress transition uh, period from new ar new argot into self watering. And what I like to do is to spray them. Um, Basically, as soon as I get new orchids in, I will give them a spray, but it's not a fungicide, it is a pesticide. Uh, I use the recipe based, basically coming from Miss Orchid Girl, where you have RO water, uh, we have some paraffin oil and a little bit of liquid soap to let them mix up the oil a bit better in the water. And that is uh, the spray that I use. So that is the spray that I like to use for uh, my new orchids and um, on occasion for my older orchids. If they have spider mites, mealy barks, uh, you name it, I uh, will give them a spray with that pesticide. Um, recently I have a different one for my uh, aphids. I use the alcohol because the aphids, they do die off from the uh, soap but alcohol, it takes rid of all of them, but they keep coming back. So I need to spray again and again, but uh, it works for the aphids. And for the thrips, I have another product that seems to be working, but that is another video that will be here if I'm really sure if it works. So that's something that will come up. But all the rest, uh, scale, etc., cetera, I, uh, I use the uh, oil-based uh, mix. And so far, so good. So that's what you saw. Talking about fungicides, I have two orchids, and I will show them to you guys now, that probably might, uh, could use a fungicide, but I must admit, I really, really hate the stuff, so I don't use it. I have nowadays the Fison 20, 20, Fison something, um, that you see uh, or, and hear uh, art growers talk about quite, uh, quite a lot. I did manage to get it. It can be quite hard to get it uh, here in Europe or especially in the Netherlands, for as far as I know, but I did manage to get it. So yeah, if I really have to, if I have some mold on the pots, my psychopsis, for example, I uh, will give it a little bit of spray with the um, Fison. Yes, that was, that was the word, but uh, that's all. I. Yeah, I really hate uh, fungicides. So those orchids that you just saw, I don't soak them, I don't get them out of the pot. What I do, what I try to do is get them as strong as possible so that they can fight the fungus on their own. And uh, I, I, I believe that's possible. I believe that that's, uh, that's something um, that is fairly natural to do. But yeah, there's a big risk that they will die, I know. But I have those guys for quite some years and they did look uh, like that for all those years. Uh, I think the new growths are doing a little bit better. But yeah, I really hate fungicides, so I don't use it. Uh, 
only on top of pots. This basically, so I'm not 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 completely not use it. <laughs> a lot of nuts, but um, yeah, I think you get the point. I avoid it as much as I can. So yeah, opinions are different uh, on the subject. So you can uh, decide for yourself if you really want to use it. Uh, use it, try it, and uh, probably let us know how it uh, did go. But um, yeah, I avoid it because I hate it. So that was number question number three. Let's get over to the fourth question. And the last one for this video. So, okay, we are now at the fourth and last question for this video. That question uh, is coming from Chantel Wilmore. I hope, once again, if I pronounce the names right, I keep saying it because I really tried my best, but it's not my strongest uh, point. <laughs> uh, Argot names, I had a lot of practice, but I still uh, managed to uh, m mix them up and uh, make all kind of new words uh, out of them. But her question is, uh, could you let me know approximately your um, culture, yeah, culture min, min and maximum temperatures in winter and summer and the average humidity levels. Uh, yes, I can. Uh, good question. And I already did a uh, comment back on her uh, question that it inspired me to make a chart because I do, as you may know, also care collapse, which I really like. And that is a part, uh, a big part of the care club, of course, because we share the care. So I thought, well, I have a general care that I uh, give for years now on my orchids. Let's put it in, in, uh, in writing and uh, I can show it on the screen. So um, that is what I did. So if I have more of these questions or once again I do a care collab, I can show this chart and it may hopefully make uh, things a little bit uh, clearer on how I do uh, stuff over here. So let's uh, put a chart. Uh, in screen so you can see it with me and I'm going to talk about it, uh, what you see and what it means. So yes, this is the Orchid Saga care chart. And I put up, uh, like I said, uh, just a, a regularly uh, basic care guide, what I do here. Um, so the first uh, on the left you see the seasons. Let's start with winter. My least favorite one, because it's too cold for me, <laughs> for my liking. But in winter, the feeding levels are about 30 to uh, 80 parts per million. The variation lies, uh, um, is, uh, yeah, lies in the, the days. Um, so what I mean by that, if we get very cold, uh, gray days, not much daylight, I will go around the 30 part. But in winter we can also have nice bright sunny days and then I will go up more towards the 80 parts per million feeding wise because the orchids uh, like the weather and they will take a little bit more feeding so therefore I, uh, that's the little bit of differentiation there. And something, somewhere in between is most of the time the case so 50 or 60 because we have a little bit of both. Uh, the pH, well you can see it is always the same, um, it's 6 to 6.3. Uh, for my liking, but I sometimes are a little bit below the 6, but 5.8 is the real max. But I try to uh, always feed them uh, in between 6 or so 6.3, so that's why you see those numbers there. Then we go one further and we are um, watching the light, the light levels. 12 hours a day at least, so in, in winter I have my LED lights on, my artificial light, and of course they get the daylight. As much as we have, they get as well as I can give them. But I uh, give them supplemental light with the LED lights. And I like the cold white ones. Those are fairly blue lights. But um, I see that they uh, respond to them quite, uh, quite beautifully. So they do grow and they do still bloom. And uh, those lights are way cheaper than the uh, regular uh, growing lights. Those are very, very expensive and too expensive for my for, for me yeah for my liking and I just cannot afford it because I use so many lights uh, so yeah LED cool white or shop lights something like that will will uh, probably work especially if you have also the daylight during the days and immunity levels uh, 60 to up to 65 percent if I go higher in winter I will get mold in the pots and too low I will see my aerial roots dry up so this is my sweet spot, 60 to 65. Then we go to spring. 
You can see I am uh, uh, add a little bit more feet because generally speaking in spring the days are a bit nicer, a bit brighter. So once again, 50 and 90. 50 is on the very dull days, 90 is on the very bright days. pH is the same, light is the same, but I added the word partial because LED partial. So um, if there really starts the sun starts coming, I give them only in the morning a little bit of light and in the evening. So at the end of the day, we had 12 hours of light. I hope that uh, makes sense. The rest is just daylight. Humidity is um, around the same level because it can be fairly cold. So I do not uh, uh, raise the humidity yet, but that will come in summer. So let's go to summer. We have a feeding level of 80 to up to 150 parts per million. 150 parts is my, uh, my most, this is the max for me. So in summer we have the warmer, brighter days, they will grow, they will bloom, so they really can, uh, can need, uh, en enjoy the feed. So therefore I am uh, aiming it up a little bit uh, um, if you compare to the rest. So once again 150 is the max. I will go uh, back and forth. So even though we have bright days, I will, if I uh, last week for example I did feed them 150 parts per million, the next will I will give them 80. So I will not variate if, uh, like I do with the other ones, and that is because I will not, uh, I, I will not try to. Uh, uh, no, I'm not trying to. But if I keep feeding at the same level, 150, I will have more salt builds up. That is what not what I like. So I will go uh, between those two, so 150 and 80. So a little less feed, so they will eat the remains left there from last week. I hope that makes sense. PH same uh, light, basically the same uh, as well. LED partial and daylight. Daylight is way more, so my LEDs do not have to do as much. But I have a few areas in my greenhouse and also in my orchid room where it's a little bit too dark. So then I keep the lights on. So therefore, I still have lights on. Uh, again, partial. Uh, the humidity, you see a difference there. Uh, if I can on the very hot summer days. Yeah, I wish I could keep it at 85% uh, because they really enjoy it, but it's very hard because it's so dry then, those days. So the immunity is, uh, yeah, I'm putting it in. I have a humidifier, electric one, um, that does a great, yeah, of course it's electric one, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, but it does a great job, but I have to fill up the uh, reservoir quite, uh, quite often, but that helps. But yeah, uh, preferably it would be around 80, 85. But most of the times it's 50, um, 50 to 60. In the evening it goes up a little bit because of the, the sun isn't there anymore. So I try to in the evening to up it a little bit. But yeah, this is uh, what I like in summer. So let's go to the last one and then we are in fall again. The feed levels are somewhere between 60 and 100 parts per million. Once again, the dollar days are getting, uh, then I feed with 60 parts per million. <laughs> Uh, not the days get a feed, but uh, orchids, of course, and 100 uh, parts per million on the very bright, uh, bright uh, days. pH is the same, lights are basically the same, again, partial, as long as I go up to 12 hours at least. And immunity is somewhere between 60 and 70, so still a little bit higher because sometimes we have a nice uh, late summer. Um, so then I uh, need a little bit more humidity as well. Then you see a very important line on the last uh, part of this chart. Every three to four months, a bit of calcium dolomite powder directly in the reservoir. So if you want to try this setup of a very similar, this one you should really take in because this is the key to success if you ask me. If you have everything right, pH, feeding levels, etc., this one needs to be added because they don't flush. I don't have that on my chart, but I, I don't flush if it's not needed. So once again, then if you don't flush over time, and most of the time it's around five to six months if you, uh, from, from the starting point where, where you did put your orchid into cell watering, um, the pH levels go, go down. So therefore, I it took me over a year to find the problem. But the problem for me was in the uh, reservoir, the pH levels were way too low. So then I came up with this solution. I saw this powder also on Tots Arkets, Tots Tropicals, 
and Rick Els. And I thought, well, it's both of them do not grow self-watering, but let's try because calcium and magnesium is also very beneficial for your orchids. And they do rise the pH. So I uh, tested it and it works for three to four months. So therefore you have to check it uh, f after that, uh, that period. And, and then I let, uh, I put a little bit amount of powder in, not too much. And then I um, let the pH level go up to seven to uh, minimum pH wise. And uh, max is eight. You don't want to go overboard. So somewhere in between those two is uh, working really well for me. And yeah, like I said, the calcium is a uh, nice uh, uh, product to add in your reservoir as well, because it's very beneficial for your plants. So this was the last question for this Q&A. Um, I hope I didn't go overboard at the length of the video, but I really wanted to take a little bit of time for these questions. To make all separate videos out for one question uh, is not always necessary in my opinion. So we have quite some information and they were suited quite in with one another because the, the chart make, uh, made, did make uh, clarify some things uh, when I was talking about the psychopsis and the uh, valinopsis, of course. So you now have a general idea of uh, my care uh, for those orchids as well. I think I covered everything. If I didn't, please let me know. Or if you have any new questions or other questions, suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I really enjoy making these videos. Um, of course, always remember this is how i grow this is in my climate this is my setup so i'm not saying this is the way to grow them this is the way for me and for my orchids which is very suited for both of us i do get really beautiful uh, results and of course i have a few of orchids that do not as well they could do better but there's always some challenge in there so that makes this a great hobby i think and when you do you get these beautiful rewarding blooms of course so uh, yeah i really really enjoy it once again leave me your questions i really appreciate it thank you for watching and i really hope to see you at one of my next videos bye bye